So third and four, see this wide receiver in this kind of unique depth. Iterating off this thing that they've done a few times now, two, two ways of iterating here. And they're trying to hit the throwback, great pass breakup, great recovery by the cornerback, the nickelback. So what's Ohio State doing? You've seen twice they ran this kind of spin series that I call it. So this orbit motion, first was a sweep, second was a hard play action pass. They also ran in the first quarter what we call this yo-yo action, which is just a simple screen. You're trying to get man coverage, and when this guy runs that orbit, you're trying to get this guy to jump over the top and lose him behind the, the line of scrimmage, and you throw back to the screen in the flat. But Michigan defended that really well in the first half. So now you're utilizing those two things, all that action, trying to get the coverage to jump. You see this guy signaling to the safety, go over. So they're not traveling with it, but they're trying to spoke. It's cover one jump for Ohio State, or for Michigan, excuse me. He yo-yos back. Now they're getting trying to get the defense to freak out. Oh, crap, they're doing that yo-yo thing again. And this guy is going to make the coverage play. It's basically mesh, but with a throwback, right? So you get a wide delay. He blocks, 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 wide delay. That's where the ball is intended to go. Now, you see him signaling. Look, he's going back. Spoke, but his he's here. So he's jumping this route. He's going deep half. This guy should be in position to pick up this cross. He gets a little lost in no man's land. Freshman there. They do all this changes in strength. So the fullback starts here, motions this way, going across the field that this guy gets lost, thinking, hey, he's gone, so now your coverage is here. And so he stays static, like he's at a linebacker level. And then realizes, oh, crap, I got to pick up this cross. So that's why he's late on it. Pressure forces the ball to be more on a line. That is key here. This pressure does get home against the left guard, forces it in the air. So third and four, see this wide receiver in this kind of unique depth. Iterating off this thing that they've done a few times now, two, two ways of iterating here. And they're trying to hit the throwback, great pass breakup, great recovery by the cornerback, the nickelback. So what's Ohio State doing? You've seen twice they ran this kind of spin series that I call it. So this orbit motion, first was a sweep, second was a hard play action pass. They also ran in the first quarter what we call this yo-yo action, which is just a simple screen. You're trying to get man coverage, and when this guy runs that orbit, you're trying to get this guy to jump over the top and lose him behind the, the line of scrimmage, and you throw back to the screen in the flat. But Michigan defended that really well in the first half. So now you're utilizing those two things, all that action, trying to get the coverage to jump. You see this guy signaling to the safety, go over. So they're not traveling with it, but they're trying to spoke. It's cover one jump for Ohio State, or for Michigan, excuse me. He yo-yos back. Now they're getting trying to get the defense to freak out. Oh, crap, they're doing that yo-yo thing again. And this guy is going to make the coverage play. It's basically mesh, but with a throwback, right? So you get a wide delay. He blocks, 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 wide delay. That's where the ball is intended to go. Now, you see him signaling. Look, he's going back. Spoke, but his he's here. So he's jumping this route. He's going deep half. This guy should be in position to pick up this cross. He gets a little lost in no man's land. Freshman there. They do all this changes in strength. So the fullback starts here, motions this way, going across the field that this guy gets lost, thinking, hey, he's gone, so now your coverage is here. And so he stays static, like he's at a linebacker level. And then realizes, oh, crap, I got to pick up this cross. So that's why he's late on it. Pressure forces the ball to be more on a line. That is key here. This pressure does get home against the left guard. First and 10, Ohio State has on a run stunt. And the problem with run stunts is when they don't work, guys aren't in position. So what happens? This nose tackle is going to 
right? Zero technique, right over the center, but he's going to slant out into the B gap. Now, especially at the college level, very few teams will block this correctly because eventually, right? This, the center, a lot of times, is going to block back on the nose tackle. There's just a gravity towards it, right? He's your target pre-snap, and even though he goes back, it is so hard to let him go and move on to the next level. Certainly, the guard who's overtaking it is going to think, that's my guy. That's, there's gravity there. Right? I got a combo block here. There's gravity. I got to stay on him. Neither take the bait. And that's what springs this touchdown because they're trying to C gap, B gap, A gap, B gap, A gap. If he has gravity for either the center or the left guard, either he shoots through the A gap or he shoots through the opposite A gap. And it's a tackle for loss. He doesn't even hesitate. Just arm, he's gone. I'm moving out. Right guard gets up through it, forms a wall, closes off the backside A gap. Right tackle overtakes. And there is your wall of bodies. And because you're relying on guys getting from the backside to the front side, right, from out of position, from an exotic position, a disguised position, they have a tougher assignment. And when the offense doesn't fall for the eye candy, guard does a nice job knocking him out. They don't fall for the eye candy. Sealed, sealed, get a crack here, cornerback, not really aware of what's going on. He takes a poor angle. It's six. First and 10, Ohio State has on a run stunt. And the problem with run stunts is when they don't work, guys aren't in position. So what happens? This nose tackle is going to, right, zero technique, right over the center, but he's going to slant out into the B gap. Now, especially at the college level, very few teams will block this correctly. Because eventually, right, this, this center, a lot of times, is going to block back on the nose tackle. There's just a gravity towards it, right? He's your target pre-snap. And even though he goes back, it is so hard to let him go and move on to the next level. Certainly, the guard who's overtaking it is going to think, that's my guy. That's, there's gravity there. Right? I got a combo block here. There's gravity. I got to stay on him. Neither take the bait. And that's what springs this touchdown. Because they're trying to C gap, B gap, A gap, B gap, A gap. If he has gravity for either the center or the left guard, either he shoots through the A-gap or he shoots through the opposite A-gap. And it's a tackle for loss. He doesn't even hesitate. Just arm, he's gone. I'm moving out. Right guard gets up through it, forms a wall, closes off the backside A-gap. Right tackle overtakes. And there is your wall of bodies. And because you're relying on guys getting from the backside to the front side, right, from out of position, from an exotic position, a disguised position, they have a tougher assignment. And when the offense doesn't fall for the eye candy, guard does a nice job knocking him out. They don't fall for the eye candy. Sealed, sealed, get a crack here, cornerback, not really aware of what's going on. He takes a poor angle. It's six. So I, I want to talk to you about gravity because it just happened on the last play. So it's a little TT stunt. So the tackles twist, fold over the top, end up getting a first down, but should be a tackle for loss. So what happens? So we always want to, especially on inside zone, mid zone, we want to slant into the play. So you slant in, ricochet up. Here they slant in and they fold over the top. Same way, similar way to how Ohio State got a free hitter earlier, right? So you loop this guy, play side. Also works as a great 
you know, pass rush, interior pass rush, because where is Ohio State weak in pass protections on the inside? So that's probably why Michigan's running it, but it works against the zone. So a TT stunt uh, versus an odd front. Now, you're going to see the gravity of two, two players. So let's start with the right guard here. He's going to slant inside, and he's kind of going to pass him off, but he's, he's not sure. Right? Can I really pass this guy off? I mean, the center's got a nose tackle over him. What do I do? I don't know. So he gets caught in no man's land. Right? He doesn't pass him off and work to the linebacker like he should, right? He doesn't stick on him, so he just becomes a free hitter. Now the center has gravity on the nose tackle. Right? He's not comboing. He's not trusting his left guard to overtake this block, as he should be. Right? Because he steps first that way. So trust my right guard's going to get there. I'm going to combo here, going to help out here. So now I overtake this block. I start sifting out. I start taking that. And you form a wall. And as things adjust post snap, you adjust too. But you trust your combo blocks that if he goes backside, I let him go. I move on. I stay on my track. And it would have been really hard to block this either way. Because it right, because this guy's folding back this way. So it would have been hard for this left guard to get there. But you're just talking about gravity and how it pulls you in zone blocking. So I, I want to talk to you about gravity because it just happened on the last play. So it's a little TT stunt. So the tackles twist, fold over the top, end up getting a first down. But it should be a tackle for loss. So what happens? So we always want to, especially on inside zone, mid zone, we want to slant into the play. So you slant in, ricochet up. Here they slant in and they fold over the top. Same way, similar way to how Ohio State got a free hitter earlier, right? So you loop this guy play side. Also works as a great you know, pass rush, interior pass rush, because where is Ohio State weak in pass protections on the inside? So that's probably why Michigan's running it, but it works against the zone. So a TT stunt uh, versus an odd front. Now, you're going to see the gravity of two, two players. So let's start with the right guard here. He's going to slant inside, and he's kind of going to pass him off, but he's, he's not sure. Right? Can I really pass this guy off? I mean, the center's got a nose tackle over him. What do I do? I don't know. So he gets caught in no man's land. Right? He doesn't pass him off and work to the linebacker like he should, right? He doesn't stick on him, so he just becomes a free hitter. Now the center has gravity on the nose tackle. Right? He's not comboing. He's not trusting his left guard to overtake this block, as he should be. Right, Because he steps first that way, so trust my right guard's going to get there. I'm going to combo here, going to help out here. So now I overtake this block. I start sifting out. I start taking that. And you form a wall. And as things adjust post-snap, you adjust too. But you trust your combo blocks that if he goes backside... I let him go. I move on. I stay on my track. And it would have been really hard to block this either way. Because it right, because this guy's folding back this way. So it would have been hard for this left guard to get there. But you're just talking about gravity and how it pulls you in zone blocking. So this is just a, I mean it's like a 10-yard game, but I want to talk pass protection and run or uh stunts up front. Because it's about to become a bigger part of the story. This is a pretty nice speed rush here around the corner. Left tackle does enough, but you see him swat down and get that rip. And he really gets down the line, right? Right at seven yards. So the quarterback has to get rid of the ball. Feels he has to step up because if he gains any depth, it's a sack. So good enough by the left tackle, but now he's worried about the speed. And that's going to come back later. The other thing I want to talk about, again, a TT stunt. I talked about how it was probably a pass stunt earlier. It just worked against the run. But, you know, we think of these stunts as usually you're getting the looper free, right? 
So you're pinning the center. So he's going to pin the center. You get a man protection call. He's going to race up. So you're trying to get a 5-0 call. So just five blockers for five defenders. Then he drops out. But you're trying to get man. Man coverage or man protection, right? So you get each guy and then you pin the center and he loops and the guard's late to respond to it. That's what your intent of this call is. But so many times it is the pinner that gets in free. Why? Because here the center doesn't get enough depth. When he feels this guy not charging, he's got to gain depth. Why? Because this guard has to shove on the first guy through onto him. But he doesn't get depth. And so by the time this guy impacts him, he's on his heels. He's not hopping back. He's walking back. Walking back isn't good. You need to hop back and regain leverage. And he pushes him right into the quarterback. And so the quarterback has to get rid of the ball early. And so it's a 10-yard gain, but the quarterback's starting to feel pressure. It's not there, but he's starting to feel it. And Michigan's setting up some things to close out the game. Michigan going to run this. TT stunt until they die. Keep on running it. Keep on getting pressure with it. Escapes the pocket. Incomplete. This could have been a touchdown in the scramble drill. First, we highlighted the same matchup early. This this guy's huge, right? He's like 18 feet tall and 450 pounds. Just a massive human being. And so to meet his length, you start leaning. And this defensive end starts leaning, and hand swat, boom. <laughs> oh, that's a good rep by the tackle. That's a good rep by the tackle. Now, let's look at the stunt, right? Pin down on the center. They're all at the same level. No one's gaining depth. Right? So you want to push him on. Now you want to start gaining depth to get the looper. You don't gain any depth. He beats around your shoulder. You got a weak shoulder. Right? He drops out. You better start gaining some depth here. Right? Someone's coming back to you. So you're pinning these two inside. Gets two there. Looping around. And you just got a weak shoulder and you gave up the edge. Where's the big defensive tackle? So they're going to run this TT stunt until it dies. Now... Scramble drill. It's always hard to scramble drill, right? It's not a route, so you're not, you know, in a normal route, you're thinking, you know, I run here versus man, I settle here versus zone. Well, this is scramble drill. So you flow with the quarterback one way or you go vertical and stuff like that, right? Those are, that's what you're taught. Wide receiver should settle right here. He's open in the zone, but he's just thinking scramble drill. I got to work to the sideline. Quarterback throws him in the spot that he's open. He doesn't settle. Slips, incomplete, could have been a touchdown. And finally, pass pro. I actually don't do a bad job picking this up. So this is kind of a cool uh, protection scheme. So he's going to drop out. They're going to run cover three behind it. He drops out into the flat. He's going to pop contain. He's going to pin inside for the linebacker who walks up. And then he's got to read pressure. And watch the hard angle set. The right tackle has been really angling hard on his pass set. And so he reads that hard charge and he wins inside. And so now the looper, instead of taking this gap, he is going to pop contain. So he reads this read pressure and he loops outside. And none of this pressure is really getting all the way home. But you see, again, the center off balance, right? He yanks him down. He's off balance. You see the inside kind of winning right there. He sees color. Quarterback sees color. He feels it. Feels this guy looping free. It's not there, but it's in his vision. And he says, I got to go. And this loop contained does a really nice job. He doesn't loop out, right? Because the stunt is over here. It's to the quarterback's right. So he needs to understand, I need to be able to two-way go. I can't charge upfield and try to get around it. I need to be able to two-way go. And so he just controls the left tackle here. You see them both kind of 
mm, mm, mm. hear it? Get the hips in, into it, pin each other out with your arms, and then rip, shed, get back to the ball. Now this is where the ball should go earlier. Maybe I need to talk about the pass play a little bit. That's where the ball should go. Weak side of cover three. Where's the rotation? He's rotating back. That's the weakness of it right there. So that running back leaking out, he should be aware before and be able to stay in the pocket and hit that for a five, six, seven yard game. But he's trying to score touchdowns here. Sees it late. Pressure hits him, interception. And finally, pass pro. I actually don't do a bad job picking this up. So this is kind of a cool uh, protection scheme. So he's going to drop out. They're going to run cover three behind it. He drops out into the flat. He's going to pop contain. He's going to pin inside for the linebacker who walks up. And then he's got a read pressure. And watch the hard angle set. The right tackle has been really angling hard on his pass set. And so he reads that hard charge and he wins inside. And so now the looper, instead of taking this gap, he is going to pop contain. So he reads this read pressure and he loops outside. And none of this pressure is really getting all the way home. But you see again, the center off balance, right? He yanks him down, he's off balance. You see the inside kind of winning right there. He sees color, quarterback sees color, he feels it. Feels this guy looping free. It's not there, but it's in his vision. And he says, I gotta go. And this loop contain does a really nice job. He doesn't loop out, right? Because the stunt is over here. It's to the quarterback's right. So he needs to understand I need to be able to two-way go. I can't charge upfield and try to get around it. I need to be able to two-way go. And so he just controls the left tackle here. You see them both kind of mm, 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 hear it, get the hips in, into it, pin each other out with your arms, and then rip, shed, get back to the ball. Now this is where the ball should go earlier. Maybe I need to talk about the pass play a little bit. That's where the ball should go. Weak side of cover three. Where's the rotation? He's rotating back. That's the weakness of it right there. So that running back leaking out, he should be aware before and be able to stay in the pocket and hit that for a five, six, seven yard game. But he's trying to score touchdowns here. Sees it late. Pressure hits him, interception. Touchdown. Just a great job by the right guard and center here. So what happens? They're trying to put Defensive tackles of both A-gaps, right? Make it really hard to get combo blocks. And you got C-gap, B-gap, A-gap, without the benefit of getting a combo block on the nose tackle with a guard in the center, right? Because now the left guard needs to take the backside A-gap, center has to take the front side A-gap. The problem is Michigan knows how to block the inside zone really well. And what you're gonna see is a rock back release from the right guard it's going to rock back into, so when we think zone, right? Just from a high level, what we think, oh, everybody steps play side, right? So zone to the right, everybody's first step is to the right. Well, this is a rock back technique by the right guard. And he's going to rock back into that A gap, hammer him inside so the center can overtake that block and release out to the linebacker. And I need to tell you that, Play by the right guard is extremely difficult, right? Because you got to bring your momentum back into a 300-pound person, not get stuck on that 300-pound person, release onto a linebacker who is buzzing, is plugging down at full speed, get a nice wide base to catch him and seal him outside. Just an absolutely great play by the right guard. Step, bam, hammer him down, rock back, release to the guard. 
six. Now, it might not be six if this guy does his job. His job is to cancel gaps behind the line of scrimmage. He's exchanging. He's supposed to, oh, better check the quarterback. Nah, that's not your job. Should have gone right into his feet. Maybe it's touchdown. Just a great job by the right guard and center here. That's what happens. They're trying to put defensive tackles in both A gaps, right? Make it really hard to get combo blocks. And you got C gap, B gap, A gap without the benefit of getting a combo block on the nose tackle with a guard in the center, right? Because now the left guard needs to take the backside A gap, center has to take the front side A gap. The problem is Michigan knows how to block the inside zone really well. And what you're going to see is a rock back release for the right guard. It's going to rock back into, so when we think zone, right? Just from a high level, what we think, oh, everybody steps play side, right? So zone to the right, everybody's first step is to the right. Well, this is a rock back technique by the right guard. And he's going to rock back into that A gap, hammer him inside so the center can overtake that block and release out to the linebacker. And I need to tell you that play by the right guard is extremely difficult. Right, because you got to bring your momentum back into a 300 pound person, not get stuck on that 300 pound person, release onto a linebacker who is buzzing, is plugging down at full speed, get a nice wide base to catch him and seal him outside. Just an absolutely great play by the right guard. Step, bam, hammer him down, rock back, release to the guard. Six. Now, it might not be six if this guy does his job. His job is to cancel gaps behind the line of scrimmage. He's exchanging, He's supposed to, oh, better check the quarterback. Nah, that's not your job. Should have gone right into his... So I wanted to talk about that speed rush earlier. Whoop. Left tackle defensive end, right? He's worried now about the speed rush. He got beat at seven. I better make sure I get depth. Oh, good job. That's weight on the inside foot. That's good. But look how wide the stance is. He's worried about that edge. Now he oversteps it. Spin, knocks his hands down, and then you get the arm over the top. That's the key to the spin. Hands down, arm over that shoulder. Once that shoulder's down, you won the rep. Beautiful sack. Now this is dangerous. This guy's supposedly coming back for another year. Former five-star, very athletic, but still raw, even though he's like a fifth-year player. Still extremely raw. Coming into this game, I would have told you he had two pass rush moves. He had a speed rush, and he had speed to power. Every time he's had to go to a secondary move besides that has not gone well. Oh, it looks like he's got a spin move now. I'm going to tell you, about 90% of spin moves, I hate. People look terrible running them. It's sloppy. It takes too long. Their rotation, their hands are just flailing all over the place. And all they're doing is losing ground. They're or not gaining ground. They stop gaining ground. Right? So they become a static target just twirling around in, in grass. Have to keep gaining ground. Well, he does that here. Gets a sack and a fumble. Progress was stepped. 